everyone is um, recuperating a little bit emotionally. I know I am. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here, and it's really an honor to have you all and to have this absolutely marvelous film. And it really shows the power of art. I mean, it really does. It shows you what art can do in the world and what it can do for democracy and for people. And to carry on a fight when sometimes the activists in that country are tired or they've suffered defeats and they, they, they can't carry the fight on any longer. And art can, art can propel it, it can keep it moving. And I think that's why we, we have in the festival this, this year a theme, art versus oppression. Because we have these films that, that show you what artists can accomplish. And I think that's a really powerful thing. So, I want to thank you all. I'm going to open up to your questions. I was simply going to ask maybe one question in each of our wonderful panelists. I'm going to start, Ayat, with you. We were talking earlier, and I think I would just like if you could tell the audience a little bit about how you came to the film, and also a little bit about your background, because I think that's really, really interesting for them to hear your background, and then how the film sort of came about in your mind, and how it changed with you and Sarah, and Sarah, maybe you could, you could jump into with that. First of all, um, thank you for having us here. It's a great honor. Um, I have to say it was a very special um, screening for me because Emil watched the thing for the first time, so <laughs> <laughs> she could have, you know, leave the theater as a practice, <laughs> but she obviously didn't. So I'm happy. Um, it's, it's really difficult to say where the movie started, right? So um, it has different stages, but. Um, for me, it was always interesting to make a movie about Amar, the woman I mentioned in the film, the first woman who sang in public in Iran. And I was, of course, always wondering how can I narrate this story. And in early 2009, I met Sara, um, and, and she was working on her first composition for, for voice and for singing. And of course, she wished that she can have a, a female voice, you know, with the female singers. And of course, we knew that she can. So that was basically the beginning of this thing for me. I, I said, look, sorry, that's, we are talking about the, first, the same project, you know. Let's do something together. You go do your concert, you know, and I'm, I'm going to follow you in, in all the steps. And, and I thought Sarah has to go through all the, you know, uh, difficulties that Amar did in, in 1920s, you know. And, and I thought it would, be more it would be much more interesting to make a movie about nowadays than about 1920s. Uh, and of course, in, in between, the Green Movement happened in Iran. And, and again, I met Sara, and, and her new compositions were totally different. It was, uh, for me, it wasn't Sara that I knew. You know, it was a totally new uh, person, a new musician. And of course, that was the moment that we decided to do a different movie. And, and, and not only to fight for female voice, but also, as you mentioned, you know, to start from the moment that the movement sort of, you know, stopped in Iran. I mean, stopped is the wrong word. Uh, brutally stopped by the government, let's say. And of course, the moment we saw ML on YouTube uh, was another, you know, impulse that, oh, okay, now we can do something bigger, you know. We have to invite her uh, to this concert. And it was a beautiful moment because when we met ML and I asked if she's interested to come join the project, she looked in her stuff in her small flat in Paris and she found a map of Iran and she said, look, that was a dream for me. I always wanted to go to Iran. I said, okay. That's it, the starting point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I let uh, Sara continue. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for having us here. And uh, that I have told you tonight's very important night for us because Emily is here, and after she's singing, I can't say anything. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Emily. <laughs> <laughs>
Because it's true, it was a big dream for me to go to that beautiful country and uh, a very big dream also to sing in Persian because for me, even before I meet them, the, I was very interested in the Persian music and for me it's, I, I might say, the most beautiful music uh, in, in the world. So I had the honor of singing in, in Persian and they, 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 um, I think they encouraged me <laughs> uh, in it. Um, and I, I welcome the idea of participating uh, with them in the project since the first second because, of course, um, um, it, had a, um, it had a special impact on me because I'm also coming from a country uh, where things are not that difficult, but where things were... Um, very complicated too for everything, uh, as you know, and it still is actually. Um, and with my songs, uh, I mean, before I start writing songs, I um, started listening to uh, people who believed in the power of songs and who believed in the power of music, like uh, Bob Dylan and John Bass, and then I moved to uh, uh, people um, in the Arab region. They weren't that many, but the artist Sheikh Imam in Egypt and the, the artist Marcel Khalifa in Lebanon. And their music um, gave me um, a huge force that I really wanted to go and fight. So maybe that's what I tried to do when I started uh, writing my own songs, to try to push people to believe in themselves um, as, as, as um, independent entities who can think and who can... Uh, decide for themselves. So that's a little bit the story behind um, the the first point where when I started writing uh, music and songs and and yeah. I'm I'm going to open it up to the audience. Uh, we have some roving mics. Yes, this is Logan, right? Oh, uh, um, I I guess I'm an American capitalist. I I was. <laughs> I would, I would love a CD for music. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding, I'm so serious. Well, actually, I have to, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's, it's available. It, uh, my name is Emel Mathlouthi, and uh, the song I performed uh, is Kinti Hora, which means my word is free, and uh, the album is uh, from the, uh, the same uh, title. Thank you. All the way in the front here, just wait for the, the microphone. It's an absolutely inspiring movie, and to um, the, the courage, the boldness, the commitment, 
the ability to take disappointment and the balancing of that out uh, is, is what an artist does in life and it just is so beautiful. I almost said another word. It is so beautiful. My, my question is about the older woman. Um, we, we hear her, we see her in that beautiful moment when the French musician and she play together, but who is she and what is her backstory? So her name is Harina Namazi. Uh, she lives between Tehran and Berlin. As she's mentioned in the beginning of the film, she wanted to be singer as a child. I mean, she started the career, but her family were against it. You know, and, and then uh, before the revolution, she moved to Germany um, to study like, engineering, very typical Iranian story. But the love of music has stayed with her. But, um, but then, after the revolution, the, the band, the female voice, she went back to Iran. And, and since she couldn't sing in public, she went to the really villages and mountains and, and she discovered really um, amazing folkloric you know, way of singing. And, and she wrote it um, with some of the most famous Iranian composers like Hossein Ali Zadeh, I don't know if you're familiar with them. And, and again, in the back doors, you know, like, uh, they couldn't have concert together, but they, they had uh, like many rehearsals and many you know, training and so on. But she really took this, you know, the gift that, uh, that the, 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 the Iranian have in, in the villages and in, in the mountains, you know. So she developed her techniques from the Kurdish singings, from the, the Khorasani singing. You know, it's, um, that's amazing, the journey she did in, in the last 30 years uh, throughout Iran. Thank you. Uh, yes, there's two questions there. One in the front row and then the one behind me. Uh, thank you very much. Um, what has been the fallout since the concert, or, or what has been the follow-up since the concert? Have there been more concerts, or you know, more room for women's voices, the female voice? Yeah, every day you hear female voice in your mouth. No, unfortunately, no. no. Actually, um, th there is no positive, uh, you know, uh, follow-up regarding the female voice. Actually, the situation is getting worse. It's uh, you no know, more resistance from the conservative part. Uh, more concerts were cancelled, so there is no positive news to share. So my question had to do with the, also the follow-up to the concert. I mean, clearly some of the lyrics in that concert could be interpreted as um, <clears throat> maybe not subversive, but somewhat provocative. Um, what has the reaction, if any, been in Iran to the concert and, and to this film, which I, I understand premiered in London maybe a few months ago, so what has sort of the, the reaction been? So, 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 um, so um, I mean, reaction to the music was actually ignorance, you know, and, and, and we believe that they don't, they want to ignore this evening that happened, you know, so, and they didn't really believe that we go that far. So they asked us to, you know, to, to have the concert, but they didn't know what, what they didn't know what we were going to do. So um, luckily, we didn't have any, you know, any negative feedback, but also nothing else. You know, so they just ignored. But for the movie, actually, it's almost a year that the movie is struggling, and and surprisingly, I received some very positive reviews in Iranian film magazine, but from the government, uh, there was so far nothing. So. And I'm, I'm happy of that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is sometimes the best. <laughs> One in two right here. Uh, yes, this, this, this question is for Sarah. What are you planning to, to do next? I mean, what, what, what are your plans? Uh, I'm continuing for hoping. I hope uh, that the women senior can sing in Iran. But uh, I just uh, work on my new composing for women singer name. But these days, unfortunately, very bad days for Iranian musicians. It's not just for women, it's for all musicians. And uh, because I don't know why, the music is very um, problem for Iranian government. And these days, uh, the most concerts uh, has canceled. 
uh, the, the, uh, you know, the uh, perfect concerts, the, uh, mm, the serious concert cancer. We have a lot of concerts, but there are, there are not the, mm, they are not with the good musicians. And, but, I hope. And then right behind you. Hi there, guys. Um, one of the things that's, I've, I've been a huge fan of Middle Eastern um, music and, and film, and what's been always been fascinating to me is, is to see the censorship or the, uh, how do I say, the closing off of artists every, from everything from the uh, gentleman who did This Is A Moot, this, this Is A Film, I think it is, it was, it was smoking out of Iran and a loaf of bread to other musicians. And my question is, to be able to, to deal with this backlash or this sense of censorship, how do you, artists communicate with each other? Because from watching various films and documentaries, it seems like the government is so oppressed on you guys that trying to express yourself becomes a real battle of wills. Thank you. So, so it's partly true because, I mean, the government is not present everywhere, of course, and when you have your private talk to the other artists, it's quite free, you know, so I studied theater in Iran, and, and when you study, I mean, of course you feel the government and the rules, but you don't talk about that, you know, you, as if they are not existing, you know, so the communication between the artists is very open, as you see also in the movie, you know, when they gather together, you know, at their homes, they talk quite openly, and, and we work quite openly. You know, so the, I think what, what, what I learned from the previous generation, I mean the generation right after the revolution, I mean the one who stayed in Iran, they, they tried to fight with censorship in a way that they ignore that, you know. So you present your work as if you don't know that there are some rules, you know. And then you receive it, you know, oh, so here you cannot do that, you cannot do that. And you say, really, you know. So of course, of course when Saru went to ministry for the first time, she knew that women cannot sing, but she still applied for that. And it's not the only one, and it's not the first time, you know, so you have, you have it a lot. And that makes the, the arts in Iran quite active, I'm sure, quite, um, it's, it's very interesting arts in Iran. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go to this side, because I didn't miss. Oh, there's, all the way up on the, on the side. This version, if it's censored, was by German and French authorities. And they didn't, so luckily. I mean, sometimes they do. I mean, in my previous movie, there were some moments that the, the German uh, uh, television didn't want us to say. But uh, so there is censorship in, in, in the West too. And we know that, you know, so it's, it's naive to say there is no censorship. But for this movie, I didn't receive any censorship. Um, and and I, I don't bother myself to present the film in Iran, you know, so we know the answer. And, and we all know that, you know, every movie goes underground in Iran. I mean, if they are good, you know, so we have to see if the movie is good enough to, to find its way to Iran. And in the middle there? Yeah. Um, my question is, I'd just like to understand a little bit why they actually agreed to let the thing go ahead in the, in the end. I mean, are they scared of uh, just women, full stop? Are they scared of kind of uh, the green movement? Are they, do you think the fact that there were French people participating, that uh, the Iranian sort of regime, that they're sort of frightened of how, they, how they're perceived internationally? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think, <clears throat> I don't think it's an Iranian problem. I think it's um, um, like a bad interpretation of the religion problem. So like, uh, in Pakistan, there's like, well, it's worse in Pakistan because they kind of, uh, now they're attacking all kind of music. So I hope that in Iran they're not attacking like even, you know, the male voices and the instruments. And so it's just that in their interpretation of the religion, um, the, the uh, female voice, is attractive, which is true. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, it shouldn't be a problem. Everybody should control himself. <laughs> so, uh, so, 
everything that is about the female, like Elise was saying, is attractive. Um, and the just, yeah, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they want to keep, they want to keep the, 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 they want to keep the Iranian people like under uh, um, many ways. So first there's this and there's this and then and then uh, the woman we have to cover her and then we have to uh, not let her sing and then and then and then it continues and so no it's just a question of freedom actually. But I think the question was why they let us do it actually. Oh, I'm sorry. So I thought. <laughs> Um, well, um, as you said, um, like, it was something that happened, and I think Sarah kind of um, uh, busted <laughs> for a long time. I think she was so insistent, insistent that, um, well, they didn't want to do it before the elections, so um, that means that it was something that was really annoying them. But I think there was a, a small euphoria after uh, the elections, and you know they got the, the system exactly the way they wanted. So I think after many, 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 many attempts, like it was two years and a half, uh, they said, "Okay, fine." And they tried to scare us many times, but then they say, "Okay, it's going to happen in this place." It was very, very controlled, um, and they know that. Um, like, people are not going to start yelling in the street and start a demonstration. So, they kind of let it go and just decided to, uh, to ignore it and uh, keep it in the dark. I also add something, it's usually, it's, you, you don't know, you know, we don't know what's going on behind the scene, you know, and, and you never know in Iran, so... But the feeling that we have, I mean, the last days, that they want something happen, you know, so as, as Emel said, something under control, but because usually in this situation they make you, you know, they bring you in a situation that you say, I don't do it, I don't do it, you know, so you give up yourself. And, and you see it among the Iranian musicians, like Sai was really believed that that's the same case. They wanted us to give up. But, but then the feeling was because the French people out there and Rouhani was in power only one month, you know, and, and he wanted to send a diff different message to the West. And, it was really like, the feeling was they want something happen. And then it was us to say, okay, we are going to do something we want, you know. And it was very small window they opened for us, which we jumped through. And for sure they didn't let us to sing solo, you know. And, and we say, okay, we go there and the French ambassador is there, so they are not going to attack us. And so let's do it, you know. And, and I, I tell you, there was a huge disagreement among the ensemble. So should we go for it or not, you know. And we decided to go for it, and we were really scared, I, I tell you, you know, I myself was very, I, I, really, I was really afraid. But we went for it and nothing happened, you know. May I add something? Yes. Add something. Uh, but I think uh, they didn't uh, uh, give us the, the Iranian musician uh, permission. They gave the French and foreign musician permission, because after that, they never, never happen again. You know, it's, it wasn't the permission for us. It was a foreign musician. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the strategy. I mean, one of the reasons we invited foreign musician was we knew that the last minute they won't cancel. You know? I mean, they uh, they don't support the Iranian musician, Iranian women singers. They support other people that they don't uh, they don't need the support. Yeah. I'm right in the middle here, just check on. I just want to ask who attended the concert and in a way could it have been a setup? Setup? A setup. I yeah, mean, so that wasn't was just the, I don't know, the, uh, some, some members of the government that attended. Maybe there were some, we don't know, but the, the thing is actually they wanted to have also a controlled audience. So what they asked us was we have to invite, you know, people. But what we did was we had a Facebook page which we announced the, the original idea of the concert and of course it was Emma's Facebook which also got many fans in Iran. But when they asked us to stop, you know, they asked us also to shut down our, our, um, our own Facebook page. But we, what we did were there were some people who registered themselves in our Facebook page 
that they want to see the concert. So they sort of pre, you know, uh, how do you say, buy the, the ticket. And we had their numbers. So instead of inviting our guests, we called those people and say, look, the, the concert will, will happen, but in a different, you know, venue. So we managed to have the public, you know, of course, it was a small number of people, they gave us a small theater, but, you know, and, and we had only like few hours to, you know, to announce, okay, we are going to have the concert, and we managed, you know. And, and then also, yes, as uh, we, we didn't, I mean, we, we, we learned a lot to say that there is a concert, you know, there was, should there, there's supposed to be a workshop, you know, a group of musicians working together. No. I mean, they didn't, I mean, if, if they were, you know, we don't know. You know, there were people in the audience that we don't know them, of course, you know, so. If there were, you know, agents, journalists, I don't know, you know. Agent journalists. It wasn't covered, like, it wasn't like an event that no. appeared in the yeah. press. And, just and I, tell, I wanted to add something, I mean, I, I was also very careful, like, you remember, we asked you not, never give an interview, you know, I didn't want any news of the concert because of, because of the security of the film team and the musician. I wanted the film to start this, you know, big noise about what happened. Yeah, actually, we were just saying that it was a workshop. We weren't yes. allowed to say that it was a concert. Yes. So I made a, I made <laughs> the first mistake because I was yeah. <laughs> when we first got there. And actually, there there isn't Facebook in Iran. Uh, I mean, yeah. the Facebook is is but, banned. Yeah. So. Uh, the Iranians, they, um, what's the website? There's a website. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so they, they, they go through <laughs> different maneuvers, which is very heroic, actually. And so that's how I connected to my page. And <laughs> yeah, one of the things Sarah said I didn't use in the film was very funny. Sarah said, like, it's not Emma who posted that, you know, because how can Emma go to her Facebook in Iran, you know? I <laughs> you. <laughs> And then we know you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought if using it in the things too much. So. Uh, let's see, there was one. Oh, it's right here. I was curious, uh, thank you, that was so moving to watch that in the film. Um, I was wondering, has the movie been shown in other Middle Eastern countries and what has the reception been there? It was recently in Turkey, and it was lovely. I mean, I don't know if you consider uh, Turkey in the Middle East, but I, I had the loveliest audience I could ever imagine. That was, that was amazing. And we are going to go to, to Morocco, for sure, and we see. And Tunisia, I mean, we are definitely working on it. I think there is also a screening in Lebanon soon, but I don't know if it's 100%. And I'm, I have to say, after the experience in Turkey, I'm really looking forward for, for a tour in, in the Arab world as well. A friend asked me if it was going to be on Netflix. <laughs> it's too soon. It's we have a theatrical release in France and Germany soon, but uh, I hope we go to other countries too. But then we can go on Netflix as well. I really, I really hope so. <laughs> I promise you. Gentlemen back there with the blue stripes. Hi, thank you so much for being here this evening. It's really incredible to have you here with us. My question's about the resources, how the film was funded. So we, we got a sense of that from the credits. You mentioned the German government and French government, but I was curious if you could give us some more details about how the project came together in that regard. So yes, I, I had a public fund from Germany and France. I mean, I think 75% or something like that is uh, German money, and the rest is French. And how it came, I mean, I had uh, my German producer. I live in Berlin, Germany, so uh, that's, that makes it a lot easier to get the German fund. Um, <laughs> but there was sort of, you know, like we, didn't, we couldn't get the German television, actually. And, and the reason is very funny. I mean, they said that who's interested to listen to the Iranian music in Germany. So they didn't want to have the film. Um, so... But we managed to get the Telesign Monde, uh, the, the French television, and, and with that we could also get some, some French fund, luckily. And, and with the German fund, we needed television, so when Telesign Monde came on board, they also paid us. It was also a long process, long fight that I did with, uh, with my producers. And I tell you, it was a huge amount of, un, um, 
how you say, um, they didn't believe, you know, that it's going to happen. So they, they thought it's a very idealistic project, and it's very good, good luck, but you, you can't do it, you know. The German embassy in Thailand didn't uh, come to the concert because they believed that it won't happen. You know, so they said, good luck, it's a good idea. But they even didn't go to watch it, you know. So that's also truth. Uh, but I mean, I'm very happy that I finally got that phone. You know. It's a little bit from everything, but still, I could make the thing. We have time for one more question. Who has a great question? <laughs> Who's <laughs> great and yeah, has a really good closing question? Do you have a good closing question? You're on. If it's not good, you give them. First of all, I wanted to thank you as an Iranian woman uh, because it just moved me and I grew up there and I know you made the impossible possible. So maybe what I felt was, because I, I was kind of into music as well when I was younger and I was living in Iran and I know how really difficult it is. <coughs> and uh, so a big, big thank you. And, uh, but did they know that you're filming the whole process? You know? I mean, I, I managed to be invisible, and it worked well. I mean, like, that's very interesting if they know that you're, really, you're building, it, you're making a documentary of this. No, I mean, only movie. the, no, no one knew that, actually. No one knew that. I had some difficulties with my first film, so I was there at Sarah's brother, I and mean, it worked very well. It's always good to have a man, you know, around, you know, with a little bit of you know. So it worked well. I want to thank Sarah. Thank you so much.